Good evening, everybody. I hope you had a wonderful Sabbath. Welcome to this uh, to chapter three of Adventist Home. Thank you for joining. Um, I'm just going to start with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day. What a gem, Lord, to have to have spent this day with you, the most beautiful day of the week. We're thankful and grateful that you were with us today and all the blessings that we've gotten. Beautiful messages. Please be with us, Lord, and fill us with the Holy Spirit as we study this, this coming chapter, Lord. And I know there's a lot of wisdom in there, a lot of things you want to show us. So show us, Lord, all that we, we need to learn from you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I think we're going to start with the first three chapters. Uh, is anybody would like to read for us, please? I can read. Okay, thank you. Your compassionate Redeemer is watching you with love and sympathy, ready to hear your prayers and to render you the assistance which you need. He knows the burdens of every mother's heart and is is her best friend in every emergency. His everlasting arms support the God-fearing, faithful mother. When upon earth he had a mother that struggled with poverty, having many anxious cares and perplexities, and he sympathizes with every Christian mother in in her cares and anxieties. Sorry, you'll need to move that up. Thank you. So yeah, he sympathizes with every Christian mother in her cares and anxieties. That's that savior who took a long journey for the purpose of relieving the anxious heart of a woman whose daughter was possessed by an evil spirit, will hear the mother's prayer and will bless her children. Do you want me to stop there or continue? Um, if you could maybe read the next two, please. He who gave back to the widow her only son as he was carried to the burial in is touched today by the woe of the bereaved mother. He who wept tears of sympathy at the grave of Lazarus and gave back to Martha and Mary their, bur their buried brother, who pardoned Mary Magdalene, who redeemed, remembered his mother when he was hanging in agony upon the cross, who appeared to the weeping woman and made them his messengers to spread the first glad tidings of a risen saviour. He is woman's best he is woman's best friend today and is ready to aid her in all the relations of life. No work can equal that of the Christian mother. She takes up her work with a sense of what is to bring up her children in the, and to, in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. How often will she feel her burdens weight heavier than she can, than she can bear? And then how precious the privilege of taking it all to her sympathizing Savior in prayer. She may lay her burden at his feet and find in his presence a strength that will sustain her and give her cheerfulness, hope, courage and wisdom in the most trying hours. How sweet to the careworn mother is the consciousness of such a friend in all her difficulties. If mothers would go to Christ more frequently and trust him more fully, their burdens would be easier and they would find rest in their souls. Amen. Thank you for reading that. Yeah, maybe it was a bit much three, but I think there was so much stuff in here that um, um, I don't know if there's any comments, but uh, just shows how that 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 God is a mother's best friend. You know, He never leaves her side, and and as as the song goes, that um, what a friend we have in Jesus. How compassionate, and He knows how difficult it is for mothers. He had a mother Himself, you know, and He knows how hard it is, and He's. He sympathizes with us and especially with mothers, you know, because it's such a big task to be a parent and it can be very overwhelming at times. And uh, the Lord knows that and he wants us to come to him and ask for, for wisdom. And does anybody has any comments? Yeah, I just wanted to um, a question. Um, so it says the the Lord had the mother that struggled with poverty. I thought I, you know, I have heard it now. Every, anything I say normally comes out of a out of a pastor or a sermon or spirit of prophecy or the Bible. And sometimes I just need clarification on things. And so, 
When the uh, the wise men brought the incense, frankincense, and myrrh, which apparently were all extremely expensive, um, I have heard it said that Jesus was quite wealthy after they brought him these gifts. So, but this is saying something completely different. So, obviously, if he was quite wealthy, it sounds like he wasn't. Um, his mother would have been, but it's saying here that she was struggling with poverty. So. Yeah. Sorry, which, yeah. Sorry, well, yeah, which one's the truth? Yeah, I think Mary Magdalene, she was the one that he was had I think if you read the second paragraph, Mary Magdalene, she was the one who had the money. She she brought that as far as I remember, if one could correct me, but I think she had that she bought the um, the oil. But I think his mother was, yeah, his, he was just a carpenter. So yeah, I, w I would think he wouldn't have a lot of money, but um, but I think she she actually bought the, the oil herself, Mary Magdalene, but yeah, like I agree with you. Yeah. Um, but all I was saying was when the three wise men, so I've heard it said oh, yeah. in, in sermons that the three wise men, when they brought their gifts, that that made the Lord quite wealthy. So mm -hmm. I was thinking as he, the, the, this, uh, the, these gifts have sustained him for much of his life. That's what, that's what I, 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 let's say, assumed. That's the way it came across to me. I wasn't really assuming that's the way it came across. Um, so I was just questioning, obviously it says here, he had a mother that was struggling with poverty. Um, and so I'm wondering if, if this is saying that she lived in poverty, um, then obviously what they're saying about God being, Jesus being wealthy because these, these wise men had brought him these precious gifts. Um, yeah, it's just, um, maybe somebody can sort of shed some light on which one's the truth anybody have any oh i see the tuckley twins have raised their hand yes what i understand the they the, the gold the silver and the myrrh what the, the wise men brought him that was used to keep them when they went to eat when they had to flee to egypt and that money was used that's what i, I think it says in the spirit of prophecy that's what that that was given them and and it was used to keep them while they, while they was in egypt and yeah. keep the family Thank you, thank you very that's much. That's what I understand. Thank yeah. you very I've much. read that several places, so that's yeah. it. Okay, hey man, I've yeah. not come across that yeah. Thank you. yeah, thank you for clarifying that. That uh, it makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, so any more comments on the paragraphs we read? And it, it was also talking about, and I think, I it could, sorry, I somebody want to say something? Um, yeah, I think paragraph two talks about Jesus wept at Lazarus' grave. Um, yeah, so he sees all, every sorrow, and and we're not alone. It's like the the mothers aren't alone. You know, some some mothers, I think, can feel overwhelmed because there's so much happening, and they can feel that they're alone in whatever they're going through. The troubles of, especially as children get older, teenagers, but. You know, he was he was there for them, and uh, he he feels our sorrow and our pain, and that's just just really touched me. And I read that, that you know he feels every every sorrow that we have, all the pains in the hearts of the mother, who's worried about a child, worried about a child's future, and he knows her sorrows, he knows the worries in her heart, and she can just if she she can just get on her knees, and she'll get power from above, you know, to. Um, to feel the strength from above and uh, they get the help that she needs. And uh, yeah, and uh, no prayer goes unanswered. If you really call for help, there won't be any prayers that get, goes unanswered. Um, any more comments on those paragraphs? I think it's fascinating where it says no work can equal that of a Christian. Sorry, does it say mother? You've just gone up from it. If you could just go up slightly, the first line. Yeah, of the Christian mother. No work. Does that include all men's work? Does that include everything? I mean, that's just amazing if that's the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true, true. And, 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 and the father too. Let's not exclude the fathers, you know, that... that 
that the mother, you know, she needs the support of the father too. You know, she can't do it on her own. And that's why, you know, the, the God made two that we, because we need to work as a team, you know, not just the mother, but the father both need to support each other, you know, and not be opposing each other in their beliefs, you know, because that's difficult for a child too. So uh, Takli Twins, I see your hand is raised. Uh, yes, uh, the, the mother, especially when the child is young and a baby, she spends more time with it than the father does. And so she, in a sense, is n n teaching it, you know. Uh, she spends a lot of time with it where the father, you know, is working. So we can't spend as much time with it. And so that it's going to look to the mother and it's going to be learning from the mother wow. at a very, very early age. And, um, you know, so that's why it's really important work because the, the first impressions you know, uh, especially a little, little baby, you know, if it's got a godly mother, then it's, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, mm. very true. Thank you for sharing that. That's so true. And the child does look like the mother's got the, the father's very important, but the mother's got the softer role, the more comforting, you know, but she's a, a little bit more softer than the father. And then the child looks to her for, for comfort, for strength and for, just that she you know whatever whatever the child is going through, you know she the child if it's a good mother, you can know is you can go to the mother and you can find that that comfort and 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 acknowledgement of his little pain in his heart or her little pain, whatever is going on, you know, just like the mother, we can go to the Lord with our our with our pains in our heart and we can find comfort and acknowledgement, you know, of, of the Lord. I'm feeling this or I'm going through this and. And um, and he'll never turn us away. Just like a good mother will never ever turn us away. You know, she'll say it's it's okay. Come sit here. I'm gonna help you, and um, don't worry. You know, it's gonna, I'm gonna be help you through this. Okay, yeah. so Ruby, please. Uh, yeah, uh, you, I see you raised your hand. Go ahead, please. Hello. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Yes, I just wanted to add to what is being said about. <clears throat> Jesus, I just want to comment on the sentence that says that Jesus is a woman's best friend. Is that what it says? I can't see it right now, but I think that's what it says, something like Jesus is a woman's best friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, yeah. yeah. He said he is a woman's best friend today and is ready to aid her in all her relations of life. Yes. Yes, I, I completely agree with that statement. You can see how how Jesus handled, how he treated women um, in the Bible with such deep respect. He always, you know, like the outcasts, for example, the woman at the well. Jesus deliberately went to the well at the time of day when the woman alone would be there. So he did not want to embarrass her in front of others. I know his disciples were could be judgmental at times. And so Jesus sent them out to get food. And while they were out, Jesus was there meeting the woman at the well and dealing with her case and making her feel accepted, you know, Everyone looked down on her because of her lifestyle. But Jesus validated her and he, he protected her dignity. He could, have, he could have approached her when the disciples were around, but he chose not to. And um, also we see how he dealt with Mary, the one who was, I think she was a prostitute. She, this, that same rich one there. We know how the disciples looked down and they cringed when Jesus allowed her to, to wash his feet and dry her, his feet with her hair. The disciples cringed. And I think they were saying in their heart, if Jesus knew what kind of woman she was, he wouldn't allow her to touch him. And Jesus read their thoughts. I think it was Peter who said that. Jesus read their thoughts and Jesus, you know, but he did not shun Mary. He allowed her. And um, yeah, and and so we 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 as women, you know, when we're going through our struggles, you know, when we go through our difficult times, 
we can be encouraged that we can find a friend in Jesus and that we can go to him with anything, things that are too embarrassing for us to say to even our, our pastor, our counselor, you know, our social worker, whoever. We can go to Jesus with those and we can open them up to him without feeling embarrassed because we know he will keep our secrets. He will never let us down. You know, so I I just I just love that about Jesus. And I I I thank God that we have such a friend in him. Amen, sister. Thank you for sharing. That's really beautiful the way you Amen. said it. He's our very best friend and he never looks down on us, you know, that we can tell him absolutely, like you said, absolutely everything. And there's no uh, he, he, there's no, of course we have to follow him and we mustn't sin, but there's no, he never doesn't look down on us. He sympathizes with our every need, every thought we can go to him and say, Lord, good or bad. And he will help us show us with the Holy Spirit, which thoughts are bad, but he will not, he accepts us. And, 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 and yeah, he, like you said, he, we can tell him the most, the things that we can't tell anybody else. He's a, just such a good friend. Thank you for sharing that beautiful thoughts. I just want to read Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. I'll just read that quickly. Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Oh, oh dear, sorry, I'm going wrong here. Uh, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I thought that was just a beautiful verse um, dealing with this, that uh, mothers can go to um, to the Lord with everything and, uh, and, pray, and, and pray in faith and say, Lord, I need your help with my child is weary, my child is going wrong, my child is stepping out of line, I need your help. And prayer and supplications are pleading with God for help and strength and wisdom to, to be a good parent because it's not an easy task. So I think that was a really beautiful verse to remember, even not just, just for mothers, for all of us. And uh, when we go to our, our amazing friend and father with our problems and with our situations. Anybody got any more comments? Amen, amen. Yeah, it's, um, isn't it a wonderful lesson to all of us how we treated Mary Magdalene. Um, it's just so humbling. It's humbling to watch who he is and how he treated her and who she was. It's just so humbling. Um, I find it so beautiful, to be honest. But my question, well, so let me share something. So I think if we read through this, uh, it says right the way through it about the mother going to him. And it's like you just read, my sister, that we need to go to to Jesus and ask him to help us. And I was listening to a sermon, don't ask me where it was, but it was, it was a nice Seventh-day Adventist sermon. And he said that there was nobody that Jesus helped that didn't ask for help. Now, I don't know whether that's true or not. Adam and Eve come to mind. Did they ask for help? I'm not sure. But I do notice there's a couple of elders here and maybe they can sort of shed some light on that. But yeah, I was saying that as you see through this, all of them, we all of us must go to Jesus, ask him for help and put our, you know, what's 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 ailing us um, to the Lord. And, um, and and he will he will help us. I, I don't think it's an automatic thing from what I'm understanding. Thank you. Amen. Yes. And uh, as you're saying, the thank you for the beautiful comment. And he's also had such respect, you know, such respect for women and for his for, for Mary Magdalene, you know, not looking down on her, even though she'd done so much, you know, in, in her past, but such love and respect that he has for us and, and for women. That's something which is just beautiful, you know, and you know, is that women are, you know, the, the weak, not weaker, but slightly less stronger than men physically. And he's just so, just so respectful and, and uh, acknowledging all these things. And yeah, just an amazing father. I don't know if there's any more comments. Otherwise, we can move to uh, the third, the fourth paragraph. Okay, we'll start on paragraph four.
Is it the fourth paragraph? I think. Uh... I think that's paragraph three. If maybe you could just move down a little bit, please. Is that? I think there's another hand up. Oh, so it, okay. Is it, Ruby? Uh, oh, sorry, Sister Ruby, I didn't see your hand. Would you like to, do you have something to say to her? Please share your, your point. Same hand. No, sorry, it was the old hand. Okay. Okay, maybe we can go to paragraph uh, four. Would somebody like to read for that for us, please? The God of heaven hears your prayers. You cannot bring up your children as you should without divine help, for the fallen nature of Adam always strives for the mastery. The heart must be prepared for the principles of truth that they may root in the soul and find nourishment in the life. So we continue. Hello. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Can you read the next one too, please? Three, uh, third, third and fourth one. <laughs> Parents may understand that as they follow God's direction in the training of their children, they will receive help from on high. They receive much benefit for as they teach they learn. Their children will achieve victories through the victories through the knowledge that they have acquired in keeping the way of the Lord. They are enabled to overcome natural and hereditary tendencies to evil. Mm. Parents, are you working with unflagging energy in behalf of your children? The God of heaven marks your solitude, your earnest work, your constant watchfulness. He hears your prayers. With patience and tenderness, train your children for the Lord. All heaven is interested in your work. God will unite with you, crowning your efforts with success. Thank you. Oh, beautiful paragraphs there. And it says, as we, in this um, paragraph four, I think as we, uh, as we learn, uh, as we teach, we learn. So, um, so what, what, yeah, what do we learn as we teaching? As we teaching our children, what things could we be learning by teaching our children? Anybody got any ideas? What we would be learning? Well, as you do a job, you get better at doing it, don't you? You find the best way to do it. You find the best way to do it, and. Um, uh, so you know you're learning you know if you if you learn if you learn any job if you're learning it as you as you as you learn it as you do it more you, you get better at it so mm. it's you know, it's just the same and you know what each child if you've got several children i imagine each each one of them is different and so, while you teach one you might not be able to teach another so you learn your child learn how your child is as well um you know which which is the most, most successful way of teaching them I mean, yes, you know, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. some ch children are cleverer than others. You know, they pick it up straight away and some you've got to knock it into them. Depends <laughs> how the child is as well, doesn't it? <laughs> and any, any that's born with um, um, a yeah, disabled or anything like that, then it's a different, so you know, it's hard. It's a harder way. You know, you've got to learn. They can only learn so much. The disabled, you know, uh, or... Um, the handicaps or whatever, yeah, they, 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 um, they can only learn so much. So each child's different and uh, you know, teach it the best way, under mm -hmm. God's guidance. Yes, thank you for sharing. And and, and also I think we learn character, <clears throat> excuse me, our own characters are formed by, by teaching our children, you know, and uh, we learn about God. As we teach our children, we're learning about God's character and our own character, our own defects, you know, if you're getting impatient with your children then you can say hey whew, I didn't know I had that bad uh, that bad defect in me and that you know that brings us closer to God by by um, finding out where we're lacking with teaching others and uh, yeah um, thank you uh, thank you for sharing Hi, Sister Ruby would you like to share your point yes um, thank you yes in regards to as we teach them we learn this is also quite literally 
um, as we teach them, whatever we are teaching them, we're learning that ourselves. And sometimes we're not learning it for the first time, but as they say, repetition deepens impression. So the more we teach them is the more um, it's deepened the impression on our lives as well. And, and, and we're understanding more clear what we're teaching them. And um, when we, and I, I remember um, quite literally when I was, at one point I was homeschooling my own children and the homeschool uh, curriculum that we were following, it was, well, it was Bible-based. And I tell you, it was such a rich curriculum. I I saw, I, I, I'm telling you, I regret not knowing um, that curriculum um, when my children were young, because I only um, came into um, that curriculum as of when my children were at the, nearly at the end of their, their well, some of them, two of them, their secondary um, the school. But I, I believe that in what, what I was teaching to them, I believe that I was the the the, the biggest student in, in 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 that thing. I learned so much, you know, and I was amazed, <laughs> you know, at how much I learned. And some of the things that I learned, I still uh, my life was never the same since I I I um I encountered that uh true education curriculum it's amazing uh and yeah so that is another way that we learn uh, quite literally as we teach our children yeah and sometimes like i said we are the the biggest student in the teaching of our children we learn far more than what they learn in the process of us teaching them and um, teaching them the word of God as well. As we open the word of God to them, we are learning it for ourselves as well. And every new thing we teach them, we are learning it too. So yes, so there is no, it's always a win-win situation in teaching our children. Amen. Thank you for sharing. That's so true. And uh, and learning, like as you said, learning so much and uh, and learning to be less selfish. You know, um, not that not that people without children are selfish. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm just saying that having children does help you to you know um, share. You know, you have to share everything. You have to share your life. You have to share your time. You have to share your resources, your money. Um, you have to really. Um, be there for them you have to share your, your your teach them how to you know be emotionally regulate and, and just everything you have to be, really be there for them at night in the beginning when babies are small i'm sure all parents know when they're crying at night you have to wake up at night and uh, all those things and and you're their protector you know there's so many things to your children and and that reminds me of the lord you know how He's, he's watching over us 24-7 every night and he's always there for us and he's just the perfect parent and we can just learn so much from his character, the way he takes care of us with such gentleness and kindness and um, I mean he gave the, the we, we, we gave our resource and our time to our children but God gave the biggest gift, he gave us his son, you know, I mean who can give more as a parent? Um, his his son's life, you know, would we be willing to do that, you know, for um, for our for, for our children? And uh, I think that's the most beautiful part of 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 knowing God's character and and learning from, as you said, learning as we're going by, by. And it's beautiful, sister, that you were able to teach your children, and give them homeschooling, and then think that's the best way to go nowadays, and uh, with the way the world is going. And uh, so, thank you for sharing that. Any more comments? I just love the, the the one that's the paragraphs in front of us that the angels even working with us and uh, that's that the, there's a whole family in heaven who's on our side. It's not just God. It's not just Jesus, but all the angels that God has given us such such rich um, resource to be on our side. And uh, you know we have everything we need. We have Ellen G. White. We have the Bible. Um, 
with this whole uh, amazing family in heaven to be there with us because God knows, you know, he gave us children. So he won't leave us with the task of, of just say, okay, you've, yeah, you've gotten children. I'm just going to drop it and you're just going to do it yourself. No, he's there every step of the way. And it's just beautiful to see that. Anybody else got a comment or a question? Okay, nobody else can do the comments, but we can move to the next paragraph, please. We didn't read this last little one, did we, for this? Oh, okay, thing. yes, if you can yeah, do, we it. do that one, yeah. As you try to make plain the truths of salvation and point the children to Christ as a personal saviour, angels will be by your side. The Lord will give fathers and mothers grace to interest their little ones in the precious story of the babe of Bethlehem, who is indeed the hope of the world. Anybody got a comment on that? Yes, I think children like to hear about the, the what they call the nativity, don't they? You know, and um, uh, and and we know the the Christian schools they also do like a nativity play. You know, the, the well, with the school we went to, a Church of England school, they always have the nativity play, and the kids loved it. Um, you know, so uh, you know, and it's and they, they can identify with the baby because they're only young themselves. So it's a good way to teach them that um, teach them about Jesus. You know, teach them as he, as he was a baby. You know, he came as a baby. Yeah. Yes, thank you for sharing. That's so true. They can they can relate to that the story of Jesus as being a child, you know, the way he grew up having good <clears throat> excuse me, having good parents and having so much help from above, you know, that they can relate to that as well. And the little, little Bible stories, I know um, my children didn't grow up in the church, um, but I did, when my daughter got older, actually, when she was, when I went back to the church and she started going to the church, she was 15 and she was reading these Bible stories. I had the whole volume of Bible stories that I'd gotten from my mother. And, um, many years ago for my children. <laughs> so I didn't read them when I was younger because I was away from the church. But then she started reading these beautiful Bible stories and that actually these little Bible stories brought her to the Lord and helped her. Um, you know, she was a teenager, but she still just enjoyed it so much. That it just um, spoke to her through this beautiful Bible story, this Arthur, what is his name, Arthur? Um, anyway, you know, the blue Bible stories. So, you know, if just those little stories just appealed to her and she'd read the whole volume, you know, in a short period of time. So it was just, um, even older children <laughs> can love these beautiful stories, as you said, this uh, appeals to all of us and the wonderful life that our Savior had, the kind of parent he, you know, the, that he is to us, really beautiful. Any more comments? Okay, there's no comments. Could you please read uh, the next, uh, somebody read, please read the next two paragraphs. Okay, I'll read. Okay. It says, in their important work, parents must ask and receive divine aid, even if the character, habits, and practices of parents have been cast in an inferior mold, if the lessons given them in childhood and youth have led to an unhappy development of character, they need not despair. The converting power of God can transform inherited and cultivated tendencies for the religion of Jesus is uplifting. Born again means a transformation of transformation and new birth in Christ Jesus. Let us instruct our children in the teachings of the word. If you will call, the Lord will answer you. He will say, here I am. What would you have me to do for you? Heaven is linked with earth that every soul may be enabled to fill his mission. 
The Lord loves these children. He wants them brought up with an understanding of their high calling. Amen. Thank you for reading. That's so beautiful. And uh, I love the last sentence. He wants them to be brought up with an understanding of their high calling. Um, so what is our high calling? That our high calling is to, to follow our Lord and to and to help others who are in the dark, you know, and uh, um, not just our children, but there's so much, there's, there's such a wider world out there, you know, um, that's our high calling, not just to live for ourselves. And, uh, and um, I think that's such a beautiful thing and, and show them that, 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 that is their calling is to, to, to serve, you know, like the Lord served, not just to live their lives for themselves, you know, to, to be servants as Jesus was a servant. So anybody got any comments? That sentence just says, if you call, if you will call the Lord will answer you, he will say, here am I, what will you have me do for you? And that just shows that Jesus, his, his nature to be a servant. He said, what can I do for you? I'm the God of heaven, the most powerful, you know, is saying to us, what can I do for you, for us sinful human beings? Isn't it incredible if you think about it? He just wants to serve. He's so humble, you know, he could just think, well, this these wicked human beings, I won't help them. But no, he's there for us every second of the day. And uh, that's just, to me, that's just, it bowls me over. Yeah, so amazing. And uh, the sentence where it says, uh, even if the character, habits, and practices of parents have been cast in inferior mold, the lessons given them in child, childhood and youth have led to unhappy development of character, the need not to spare. So the Lord can even help them, even if they had a terrible childhood, they can... And they need not worry because the Lord can still change their future. You know, you, you can't change the past of, of maybe having a bad childhood or having um, a, a, maybe a, a youth that wasn't that, that nice. But he can change the future. He can still give them that hope that, uh, that they maybe didn't have as a child. So that's just beautiful how he can work with us and he can do amazing things with our with the future. Um, yes, go ahead, please, sisters. Yes, you hear the terminology like father, like son, or like mother, like daughter. If the parents, you know, they're not living right, the, the child still can, it's still got a chance if, it, you know, he accepts Jesus. And, uh, you know, because Jesus can change lives. I'm sure we all know examples, examples where, you know, some children come from um, happy homes, not, they're, not, they're not happy homes, but um, they make a good, you know, they, they accept Christ and um, things are different in their life to what they were with the parents. You know, some children are born with it, uh, especially if the, the mother drinks and the child is born, it's born an alcoholic, you know, if the mother's a heavy drinker. And so they have to, do, they have to sometimes treat a child that's, um, that's uh, in, you know, it's uh, physically, that because it's inherited um, its mother's bad habit of drinking, you know. Um, but it doesn't have to, um, it, I think they're more susceptible to drinking, but if they learn the way, where the truth and love follow Christ, then they don't have to do it. So there is a, there is hope for a child that comes from the worst kind of family, if they accept Christ. Amen. Yes, thank you for sharing. That's so true. You know, that's uh, the, the the past. Like I said, the past might be shaped, and as you said, might be shaped. But there's always healing, and there's always hope with the Lord. You know, in any child the way he's been brought up wrongly the Lord can still change his character and you can work on him and he's got he, you know we've got a lifetime that the Lord can work on our characters he doesn't give up on us you know even though we've been taught wrong things as a child he can still shape us if we're willing and help us to change and be those beautiful people like you said sisters but to be those beautiful um people that he wants us to be kind and loving and 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 change and and get rid of those bad habits like um like you said like drinking or on the smoking you know that you maybe have inherited from your parents so those bad tendencies yes go ahead sisters please i was just thinking about the kings of um israel some were good some were bad and and, uh, and um uh jerusalem and that some were good kings and then, and then the son would be a rotter <laughs> and then you then you get a son would be a rotter and 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 their son would be a good king 
you know, it just shows you that you don't, it doesn't have to be like father, like son. You, you don't have to take the down to all be tired with the same brush. <laughs> That's so true. Thank you for sharing that. Those are good examples, yes, <laughs> of how the Lord can still transform a person's life from, you know, the, the bad tendencies that he's got in as a child. And he can, he can do wonders and miracles with our lives if we just submit them to him and, uh, and, and say, Lord, I want to change and I want to, I don't want to be this person that I, that I, you know, that I grew up to be. I want to be different and uh, he can make something beautiful of our lives. Any more comments? So do you really want to say something else, uh, Tuckley sisters, or is that an old hand? Maybe it's an old hand. Um, anybody got any more comments? Otherwise, we'll move on to the next paragraph. Okay, um, does anybody want to read the next one? Uh, the next two, nine and 10, paragraphs nine and 10, please. Okay, well, I'll read them. The Holy Spirit will guide. The mother should feel her need of the Holy Spirit's guidance that she herself may have a genuine experience and submission to the way and will of God. Then, through the grace of Christ, she can be a wise, gentle, loving teacher. Christ has made every provision that every parent will be controlled by the Holy Spirit, will be given strength and grace to be a teacher in the home. This education and discipline in the home will have a molding and fashioning influence. Wow, beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, words. So the mother needs to feel, you know, be humble and say, Lord, I need your help and call on the Holy Spirit so that she can be submissive. And uh, because if she's not submissive, she can't teach her children to be submissive. And uh, that's so important that she, from a young age, teaches them to be submissive, not in a bad way, but to be, to listen to the parents' guidance and by, by learning to be, learning um, to be, to have a teachable spirit to the parents, the child will later have a teachable spirit towards God. And she, he'll want, the child will want guidance from the, from God because he's used to asking for guidance from his parents. And if the parents are a good guide and a good parent, the child will recognize that, um, that God will also be a good guide if they see godly parents. Anybody got any comments? Yeah, so it's still telling us that the Holy Spirit will yeah, will guide us and uh, will give us strength and grace, and uh, we really need the Holy Spirit because we what are we what, we can do nothing of ourselves, nothing. We have no wisdom, you know. We're just made of dust, you know. We we need all the wisdom from above to be to be good parents because it's such an important task, you know. You're bringing in this little person into the world, and they've got to be in the a good citizen, they've got to listen to the law, they've got to be, um, you want them to be a good influence to others, you know, to make a difference in this life, to be a light to others, you know, and uh, so the parent has to be the light himself with with the Holy Spirit, you know, the, showing the child that um, that they need to be, um, to be helpful and kind to others, you know, and uh, otherwise, uh, if, if a child gets to grow up to be selfish and see the selfish parent, then they're not going to be a good influence to the rest of the world. They're going to think this is the life, you know, me, 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 and uh, and this is just, I'll make sure I have a life for myself, but that's not what God wants. So we need to, from a young age, to show this, the child that 
that there's more out there. There's there's that we need to be servants and uh, with the with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, because without the Holy Spirit, we can do nothing. And praying with a child and saying, you know, teaching the child to ask the Holy Spirit from a very young age, and um, yeah, beautiful passages. Anybody got any comments? Okay. Um, okay, there's no more comments. Maybe we can move on to the next uh, two paragraphs, uh, 11 and 12. Anybody would like to read that for us? Divine power will unite with human effort. Without human effort, effort, divine effort is in vain. God will work with power when in a trustful dependence upon him parents will awake to the sacred responsibility, resting upon them and seek to train their children aright. He will cooperate with those who, those parents who carefully and prayerfully educate their children, working out their own and their children's salvation. He will work in them to will and to do of his good pleasure. Human effort alone will not result in helping your children to perfect a character for heaven, but with divine help, a grand and holy work may be accomplished. Amen. Thank you for reading that. That's uh, really beautiful, you know, that we need divine help from above. We, like I said, we are nothing without the Lord's help. Uh, but the Lord also needs us. He needs our human effort. So if he can't force anything on us. So we need to, as a parent, we need to give our, put out the effort there to teach the child well, asking God, but also um, we're willing and, and saying, Lord, I want this child to grow up in, with you, not just a, just a child in the world that that's, lives his life. No, the child that lives fully for you and um, lives and follows your footsteps. So. I'll help to anybody got any comments? Yeah, yes, I just want to, I just, yeah, I just want to, um, yeah, just add to what um, has been said that, well, as this is saying here, that human effort, human effort, what's I'm trying to find the top of, can you go to the top of the um, the first sentence? Yeah, thank you. It says, without human efforts, divine effort is in vain. And then down the bottom, it says, human effort alone will not result in helping your children. So it's both. We as human cannot do it on our own. And God wants to help us as well but he will not force himself on us he wants us to cooperate with him okay so we need to go to him we need to ask him for help um and he's ready and willing to give us the the the, the help that we need to work as co-laborers with us in bringing up our children um to be godly individuals you know to have the, the character qualities that he approves yes so it's one working with the other thank yes. you amen thank you for sharing that yes very powerful combination when a parent calls on the all of the the, the, all the the calls on heaven and calls on his on their father to say lord help me to raise this child you know that that that's just amazing how the child will be if we, if we, every time we pray and we pray and pray and ask god god i need divine guidance i cannot do this on my own and every step of the way not just every now and again but daily pleading for our children's souls and even now you know as the children gets older 
our, our task is not done, you know, as a parent. I mean, even for me, my children are 30 and 32. And uh, even now I can see that sometimes, especially my daughter, she'll come to me for advice, you know, and uh, and I don't give it to her if she doesn't ask me. And the Lord doesn't do that to us either. He doesn't force himself on us. He waits for us to come to him and ask, say, Lord, I need your help. And, uh, you know, that's that's the way that the, the law doesn't work that way. And then I, I try not to force myself on my children. I try not to, if I see something's going really wrong, I might say something. But as they get older, they don't really want you as a parent to tell them what to do. They want to live their own lives. And they're adults, you know, but if they ask you for advice and say, hey, hey mom, um, what should I do in this this circumstance? Or, you know, not that I have all the wisdom, but, you know, God, God gives us the wisdom to help our children. And we, so we need to keep praying. Even when they're older, we need to keep praying every day. Help me, Lord. Give me the wisdom, the knowledge that I can help my children. And uh, God has all the wisdom. I don't. I have nothing. And as a parent, we need to remember that, that, that we have no wisdom of our own. Um, any more comments? I think uh, somebody's uh, mic is not so uh, close. Uh, somebody's not muted. Anybody know? No more comments for these paragraphs? Okay. Um, I like that sentence too. He will work in them to dwell and to do his own good pleasure. You know, that he will. And what is God's good pleasure? It's only good things. It's not, it's nothing bad. It's always good pleasure. It's always beautiful. Whatever he does in our lives, it's always good. And it's always for our own, own, own best. You know, it's not, he'll never harm us. And that's the most amazing thing about God. I just, I just love that about him. Always everything. And sometimes we get upset when things don't go our way or, Maybe we think, you know, I'm not doing a good job as a parent or um, then we can call to him for help and, and he will help us and he will not leave our side. Uh, and there's another hand. Sister Ruby, would you like to comment, please? You know, uh, yeah, it's just a question I heard um, asked once in church. And I just want to um, just throw that question um, here on this platform now. Somebody once asked a question, can a single woman raise... Uh, a son to be a balanced man, a man who is balanced in all his ways, can a single mother do that? And I think people were in the audience were saying, no, you can't do it. You have to have both parents in order to, to raise um, a, a, a boy to be a man who is balanced. But I, yeah, so most of them were saying it's, uh, that yeah, you can't do it on your own as a single one, but but it's not true. It is not true because if the if the earthly father is absent, Jesus is there to be the perfect substitute father for 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 that absent father. And so we see here that whatever our needs are as a mother, whatever our struggles are. If we work as co-labor with Jesus, we can bring about, raise up the most perfect, um, or I mean, I mean, not perfect in that sense, but um, yeah, it says that the character, it says the human effort alone will not result in helping your children to perfect a character for heaven, but with divine help, a grand and holy work may be accomplished. And that's not talking about um, it's not saying, it means any parents, whether it's both parents or one single mother. Once we call on divine help, Jesus um, will work with us to bring about this grand and holy work. So, yeah, um, so, <laughs> so I'm just saying it. I'm just uh, using this information here to answer the question that they were asking. So I don't know if you if if you agree with 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 what I just said. Yeah, that as single mothers we can raise balanced children. 
Thank you for sharing that. That's so true. If we have the Lord's help, you know, what, what can really go wrong? It's, it's, I, I personally think it's better to have a father as well. But if you don't have a choice, then the Lord will step in that gap. He will know that we, we, we have that deficit. We don't have the father and he will give us that guidance. So that's just my opinion. There's two hands. Um, I don't know who was first. Um, oh, yes. I, no, yes. I see your old hand. Just, uh, Brother JB, would you like to comment, please? Uh, good evening. Yeah, just to say, I do agree with Sister Ruby. Whether it's the father or it's the mother, if one of the spouses passes away or is a single parent, we can't all think that, well, the, all the children they were raised, they're condemned or they've got no, no chance in life because the scripture says all things are possible. So through Christ, all things are possible. There's nothing impossible. As long as that parent does the best they can do and uh, allow Christ to help them to raise that child, that child um, will be, I mean, will still be as good as a child that is raised by, uh, by two parents. The ideal is both parents are present. But in most cases, in some cases, both parents are not present. So simple because it's it's a one parent raised a child it doesn't mean that that child doesn't have a chance both parents can raise a child and the child still grows up and chooses to depart from i mean from christ so there's no guarantee that two parents raise the child and then that child is guaranteed no thank you Amen. Yes, thank you for sharing that. That's so true. You know, that's uh, with the power of the Lord, we can do anything and nothing is impossible for him, knowing that we only have, like you said, one parent. So that's very true. Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else got any comments? Okay, maybe we can go into the next two. I think there's only it's a very short paragraph, only 13 and 14 still, the last two paragraphs. And I think the chapter's done. It's a very short one. Anybody would like to read the last two paragraphs for us, please? Yes, I'll read. It okay. says, when you take up your duties as a parent in the strength of God, with a firm determination never to relax your efforts, nor to leave your post of duty in striving to make your children what God would have them, then God looks down upon you with, ap with approbation. He knows that you are doing the best you can and he will increase your power. He will himself do the parts of the work that the mother or father cannot do. He will work with the wise parent. He, sorry, he will work with the wise, patient, well-directed efforts of the God-fearing mother. Parents, God does not propose to do the work that he has left for you to do in your home. You must give up. You must give up to indolence and be slothful servants. If you would have your children saved from the perils that surround them in the world. Now you must not give up. Sorry, let me read that again. You must not give up to indolence and be slothful servants if you would have your children saved from the perils that surround them in this world. Yes, could you read the next one too, please? Okay. Cling to Jesus when trials come. Parents, gather the rays of divine light which are shining upon your pathway. Walk in the light as Christ is in the light. As you take up the work of saving your children and maintaining your position on the highway of holiness, the most provoking trials will come. But do not lose your hold. Cling to Jesus. He says, let him take hold of my strength that he may make peace with me. And he shall make peace with me. Difficulties will arise. You will meet with obstacles. Look constantly to Jesus. When an emergency arises, ask, Lord, what shall I do now? 
Amen. Thank you for reading. Yeah, so much wisdom in there that uh, we, uh, when we ask, the Lord is right there at our side. He says, um, Lord, what shall I do now? You know, clinging to Jesus when the trials come, and especially the trials as a parent, because they will be there. You know, there will be times when you will have no idea what the next step is, and 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 maybe you see your child struggling, or you see them going wayward. Um, with the Lord, and you just really have to please with a plead with the Lord and say, Lord, help. What what do I need to do now? Because I have no idea, you know. So it's uh, I think those are such encouraging words for all of us, not also for our trials, but especially as being with a parent. And uh, um, so there's no relaxing to our efforts, uh, there's no leaving our post, and uh, that's what it says in front of us that leaving our post and and and. Yeah, there's no saying I'm giving up now because, uh, you know, I don't know what to do. No, as a parent, you have to carry on in that path. And there's no, like the Lord never gives up on us, you know. He's such an amazing parent. He will never think, oh, that child is so wayward, I'm giving up. He keeps keeps at us. He keeps helping us. He keeps that outstretched hand. And so we need to do that as a parent, you know. that's A, a parent is a lifelong commitment. and um but the Lord is at our side and we don't have to get overwhelmed. We can just call on the Lord when we're stuck and we're anxious or worried or we don't know which direction to take. So the Lord really looks down with us in pity and pity and 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 uh, caring and and understanding that it's it's hard for us, you know, as as a parent and um you work very patiently with us and uh and as it says here, as so uh, well-directed efforts of the God-fearing mother. You know, he works very closely with the mother and he won't leave her side. Any comments? I just love that sentence. And he says, he knows that you're doing the best you can. You will increase your power. Isn't that amazing, you know, that... God will give us that extra, extra boost of power just when we need it, when we think that, you know, everything is going wrong. And it's just, just not with parenthood, but even with life, when we really think that all our strength is gone, that the Lord gives us that extra boost. And uh, I've noticed that in my life and, and I'm thinking, wow, this is just, you know, I'm, I'm really tired or, or, or whatever, you know, um, I have this new job, I'm overwhelmed. And the Lord says, I'm going to give you that boost of strength. And the next day you've got like, wow, you've got all this, the strength and like, wow, it's so amazing that your prayers are heard when you call out and you just, you're tired or, or it's just so much or, or whatever it is, it's difficult. The Lord says, don't you worry, you know, I'm with you right through all these things, these trials, these struggles, I'm there. And you just, the next day it's like, wow, and you feel this 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 power from above and it's just so amazing yes go ahead sister ruby yes i love the the sentence that says he will himself do the part of the work that the mother or father cannot do you know this is really powerful <laughs> it means that jesus is we're under his watch care he's he's watching us and he's seeing all our efforts and he knows that there are tasks as parents which we might not be able to do or which we will not be able to do. It's so great that we cannot do it. And here, it is saying here that Jesus will step in at this point and he will do those tasks for us that we're not able to do. Isn't that mercy? Isn't that grace? That is favor as well because more than us as parents, Jesus wants the best for our children. He wants our children to have the perfect character that will fit them for heaven. And so he watches us and he steps in when we are not able to do those, those tasks. He's, God is really amazing. <laughs> he is amazing. Amen, sister. Those are beautiful thoughts. That's so true. He steps in, and when we think we just we've reached our last our last breath, we just can't anymore. Then he's there, right there, and uh, it's just amazing. Um, it's beautiful thoughts. Thank you for sharing that. Anybody got more thoughts on these two paragraphs? I think 
the, the fact that Christ says it's um it's a, like a cooperation between humanity and divinity. The, the children are a gift from God. It's their heritage. So it's not encouraging laziness for, for parents just to have children and then just let God or the state, um, just let somebody else or the state or himself to raise them up. Each The parents are responsible for bringing the children up. God will help and do his part, but the parents can't just have children because the scripture says, be fruitful and multiply. Multiply if you are ready to train them up in the way of the Lord. So the parents have a big, big responsibility because of how the children will turn up to be in life, in most cases, uh, in some cases, is the parents' fault. They fail to train them up. But as long as the parents do their duty and train them up, if they grow up and decide to depart from, I say, the Lord, therefore God doesn't hold anything against the parents but if the parents i mean if the if the parents uh, i mean fail to train up the children god will hold the parents responsible because the train up a child is a command it's not an option so as the moment the person has the children the training up has to kick in according to god's way that is the, the only way. Otherwise, people have to stop and, uh, I mean, and uh, and have a serious think about it. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for sharing that, Brother JB. That's so true. It's a big responsibility, and the Lord expects us to take our part and uh, and to call on Him for help. And even before we uh, we start being parents, we should already actually. When we, I think when we think we about we want to have children, it's uh, you know if, if it all goes well, not everybody can have children. But if we're thinking about that, we should already start praying, Lord, beforehand. How when I have children, Lord, help me, prepare me, prepare the way for me, prepare my thoughts, prepare my heart, that I will be the best parent, the best mother, the best father, in, in that that I can possibly be with you, and. Um, so any more thoughts? I think we only have two more paragraphs. Maybe I thought we were finished, but we have 15 and 16, I think. And maybe we can just finish those. I know we're over time, but then the next person can take the next paragraph. If we can just scroll down to the last two, I think 15 and 16. I think those are the last two. So anybody who'd like to read the last two for us? The harder the battle, the greater their parents' need of help from their Heavenly Father, and the more marked that will be the victory gained. Then work in faith, patiently, lovingly, as faith stewards, as faithful stewards of the manifold grace of Christ. Parents are to do their appointed work. It is expected of them that they will be found faithful. Everything is to be done in faith. Constantly they must pray to God, Pray that God will impart his grace to their children. Never must they become weary, impatient or fretful in their work. They must cling closely to their children and to God. If parents work in patience, love and, earnest, and earnestly endeavouring to help their children to reach the highest standard of purity and modesty, they will succeed. I mean, what an encouragement yeah, that uh, the parents work constantly with the Lord, they will succeed. So the Lord doesn't just say, maybe you'll succeed. He says, if you work with me side by side, you will succeed. So the promise is there. Don't give up. Cling to me. Cling to your children. Uh, hold them in your arms and I'll hold you. If the Lord is, is telling us, you hold the parent in his arms, you know, because we, we're just so weak and, and we need so much help that we have to rest in those beautiful arms and, and, and find comfort and strength in those arms. You know, those amazing, powerful arms that keep us up, keep the, the mother and the father's arms up when they're doing this beautiful privileged work. And it's a privilege to be a parent. It's a gift from the Lord, you know, and, uh, and, and to be patient and loving and, 
that's something that we need to be. And uh, as parents, patience is, is difficult sometimes when the children are just, you know, being naughty and you really don't, you want to, you know, you want to lash out, but the Lord says, be patient, you know, and um, that's, uh, that's a beautiful quality to have patience and uh, we're constantly praying to the Lord and asking for grace and help and never getting weary, as it says, never getting weary and, uh, and and worrying, getting fretful, because that doesn't help us anything. When we get fearful, what happens when you're in a fearful state? You can't think straight. When you get afraid, your brain kind of, I, that's what I found, I kind of like, if I have to make a big decision and I get fearful, my brain kind of like blocks and I can't think straight. When I relax and I start praying to the Lord and say, Lord, I don't know what to do in the situation. Then all of a sudden, all this, the Lord gives me wisdom. So getting fearful, your, your brain doesn't just, you get in such a fearful state, your brain doesn't work well. You know, you just can't have that wisdom from above. So we need to, when we have these fretful situations uh, or, or difficult situations as a parent, we must pray to the Lord, not be fearful, but be calm and say, Lord, I know you're going to help me. Give me the, the courage, give me the strength and the wisdom I, which I need from above. So any more comments on those two paragraphs? So everything done in faith and stepping out in faith and claiming God's promises, you know, that he's given us in the Bible, claiming every one of them. When we're praying, Lord, I'm claiming this, that you, you've told me you will give me this help as a parent, claiming it. And the Lord likes that. And then he steps in, you know, not if we're fretful, he helps us too when we're fretful, but he, that faith, he loves that, you know, like a child has faith in his parent that his parent will take care of him, you know, having that faith of a child. And a while ago in the morning, we were talking about actually having the, 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 the thoughts that a child has. What does a child do when he goes to sleep at night? Or maybe it was during Advent home, that when a child goes to sleep at night, he really, he, he, he rests and he knows that his parent is going to clothe him the next day. He's going to feed him. And as, as a parent, we can, um, we can, as a parent, we can go to the Lord too and rest in and, and go in faith and say, Lord, I'm just going to go to sleep tonight. You know, I know you're going to take care of me. You're going to tell, give me the wisdom. And, the, and even if I don't have the wisdom today and I go to sleep and I pray, when I wake up, I will have that wisdom for the next day, enough wisdom for the whole day to know how to take care of my child and how to 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 teach my child today and to show uh, through my character that my child will see you in me but through my patience through my kindness through my extreme love for my child he will see you and sometimes you know children don't have a good relationship with God because they don't see that love in their parents in the, in the mother or the father they don't see that that love for them and and it's difficult for them to see that love the love of God because they've never had the love from the parent. So that love and that patience is so important. Any more comments? Okay, so Sirim, you go, go ahead, please. Yeah, um, I'd just like to say that, you know, God is such a merciful God. You know, a lot of us parents, we didn't get it right when we were raising our children. Some of us, we didn't know about these beautiful counsels about how to raise our children. You know, we, we, we didn't um, use them. Some of us didn't know about them. Some of us, the books were there, but we didn't read them. We didn't have them. We didn't take time out to buy them and to, to read them. You know, but God is such a merciful God. Even, you know, we didn't get it right. Um, and our children have grown up, you know, we, without these um, counsels. But it is never too late. You know, even when our children are young adults in their teens or whatever it is, I'm going to university. God is such a merciful God. We can still, you know, when we come into these light 
you know, we can still start praying for our children. And God will hear our prayers and he will do for us what we are asking him to do. He's not going to say, okay, I'm sorry, it is too late now. You didn't do it when you were supposed to do it. So I'm, I'm not going to, uh, you know, give you time of day. He's not going to do that. We still pray and he will hear our prayers. And, uh, you know, as his word says, um, I think he says, our children shall be taught of the Lord. So even if they're a young adult, we can ask the Lord to teach them to, you know, or to give us wisdom to, to still teach them. And, and he says, great will be the peace of our children. So I just want to encourage any parents on here that it doesn't matter what age your children are. If you didn't get it right when they were young, you don't despair. We can still pray to God and ask him to impress his truth on their hearts, to give us wisdom that we can still give them wise counsels even at this stage of their lives. And God will hear our prayers and he will answer it because it is his will for, you know, for, for our children, whatever age they are. He doesn't put age limits on them, you know you know, to still develop these Christ-like characters that will fit them for heaven. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. So true, Sister Ruby. Um, you know, I didn't, I was away from the church, so, you know, very sadly, I didn't um, read Energy Wise Councils. I left the church when I was you know, 17, 18. And my daughter, when she was 50, when I decided to go back to the church, she you know, the Lord still helped her to to come to, even though I had not done I had not uh, done the basics. I had not taught her as a child because I was not with the Lord. She still got you know got got, got still her life has still changed, and she still accepted the Lord as her Savior at fifteen, at sixteen. She was baptized, and her life is so beautiful now. She's such a she works for a ministry, and even when she was 16, she was sometimes allowed to preach in the church. It was just such a turnaround for, for, for what the Lord did in her life, you know. So it's like you said, it's never too late, you know, for the Lord to still make something beautiful of our children's lives and and still, you know, um, teach them in his way. And that's just, yeah, the Lord never gives up. And that's the most beautiful part. And we cannot give up as a parent for loving our children and being there for them, and uh, till the day we lay down our heads, you know, until we, in the, or, or till the Lord comes, until we're old, or the Lord comes, we're always a parent, and uh, you know, we cannot give up on our children at any stage of life. And uh, with God's guidance, He'll always be there for us in every step of the way. Any more comments? Okay, I think uh, that's, uh, thank you very much. It was a short chapter, so <laughs> we did it all in one session, but thank you for joining us. Um, uh, could I ask Brother JB, could you please close for us in prayer? Let us pray. Merciful Father in heaven, Lord, we come before you this evening. We thank you for the Sabbath uh, that has ended, and we pray, Lord, that it will start another week. Lord, we pray that you be with us and we pray, Lord, that as we continue reading the spirit of prophecy, Lord, we pray that you take away the lessons uh, that are being taught here, that the encouragement uh, for the parents to train up a child in the way that you can go and uh, they should go so that when they are grown up, they will not depart. And this is the command that we have given in the scripture. Therefore, Lord, we pray that... Uh, who always seek your counsel to raise these little ones in a way that is pleasing in your sight. And we thank you for Sister Shannon as she has ministered them to us, our Lord. We pray that you be with her and be with her family in a special way to bless them. And may the Holy Spirit continue to lead them in a mighty way. Uh, we pray that as we uh, have started another week, Lord, I pray with you, that you be with us and may your uh, holy angels that excel uh, in strength, uh, be with all of us, Lord, and protect us throughout the whole week, uh, the whole week until we meet next Sabbath. Thank you for Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for praying, and thank you everybody for joining. It was a beautiful, 
passages that we read and beautiful comments. Thank you for that. And uh, I don't know if you still wanted to give some um, uh, announcements, uh, Tuckley sisters. Yes, we'd like to thank this Charlene for the, taking the chapter. Um, the next week's will be Father the House Band, or the husband, Father the House Band, um, section nine. Um, I've got to confirm with a couple who's do, down to do it because I know there's a, a as um as um an event on at Northampton in the evening, and so. We might have to get somebody to stand in for the couple. I don't know yet, so I've got to, got to check with them. Uh, so at uh, 4.45, it will be morning prayer. Um, 6 o'clock will be to Dar of Ages. 12 o'clock, uh, uh, midday prayer band, and the speaker is Sister Juliet Buckner. For those of you who uh, have seen her before, or I oh, haven't seen her, she had long COVID and she was put in a, a coma for two weeks, which ended up to be four months and when she came to she had to learn everything again you know she'll probably tell us how she's getting on but she's um, she's doing well now you know she's still um uh she's still not as not as she was but she she can get about a bit and um you know it's the things are improving for her um she didn't take the jab by the way uh, but she got this like this bad covid so she'll be doing 12 o'clock for us. And uh, uh, mid uh, uh, 6.30 it will be song service and uh, we're still confirming the preacher for the week. So we're not sure who it's going to be yet, but the desire will let us know. So have a nice evening, everyone. See you all later, by God's grace. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Good night. Good night. Good night.